The intense battle for Bakhmut may finally be nearing an end. This is a key city in eastern Ukraine, which has faced a relentless Russian assault for weeks. Well, just hours ago, the founder of the Wagner mercenary group said his fighters have now all but surrounded the city. And he appealed to Ukraine's president to order a Ukrainian withdrawal, saying, quote, the pincers are tightening. Russian forces blew up a vital supply bridge connecting the town to nearby areas. Ukrainian police tell CNN they hope to repair that bridge in the coming days. Meantime, Ukrainian forces blew up a rail bridge in Bakhmut that they had previously damaged. The military denies it's a sign that troops are preparing to withdraw. Well, as that battle rages, Sergei Lavrov is hearing the sound of international ridicule. At Thursday's gathering of top G20 diplomats in New Delhi, the Russian foreign minister was pushing his boss's narrative about Moscow's invasion of Ukraine when this happened. You know, uh, the war uh, which uh, we are trying to stop and which was launched against us using the Ukraine, <laughs> U Ukrainian people, uh, of course, it influenced, influenced, influenced uh, the uh, policy of Russia. Hmm. CNN's Vedika Sood is live from the Indian capital. You've been monitoring what's been going on at these key meetings. What are the... Uh, what do you believe are the key takeaways at this point? Well, perhaps the biggest takeaway would be a day after the G20 summit here in New Delhi, where the foreign ministers had converged and convened to talk about pressing issues, Becky, mainly emerging from that conflict uh, in Ukraine uh, with Russia, is, you know, the, the, the rise in prices in food commodities and energy. And India was hoping to play a leading role in bringing the West and Russia together and finding common ground, but they failed to do that. And that's essentially because Ukraine was the issue over which there was a sharp divide. We've seen that on Thursday, we've seen that again on Friday. There was a quad meeting today of the four foreign ministers, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, a Japan foreign minister, Australia foreign minister, as well as the Indian foreign minister. There wasn't a, a, a direct statement or a strong statement that came out condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And perhaps that's because India has had a very historic tie with Russia for decades now, and they haven't come out and directly condemned Russia for their war in Ukraine. But they did come out with a joint statement, and they did emphasize the, that the use or the threat of use of nuclear weapons is inadmissible. Now, Blinken, for a second day running while in New Delhi, did send out a strong message to Moscow. Here's what he had to say Friday morning. If we allow... Um with impunity, uh, Russia to do what it's doing in, um, uh, in Ukraine, then that's a message to would-be aggressors everywhere that they may be able to get away with it too. You know, Becky Lavrov has repeatedly said that the West is trying to deflect from other issues. It's trying to distract the, uh, the people here at the G20 foreign ministers meet by talking only about Ukraine. You heard the audience the way they laughed when he tried to indicate really that Russia is the victim and not the aggressor when it comes to the war in Ukraine. And that's the response he'd got. Now, the biggest takeaway for me, perhaps as a journalist here in New Delhi at the G20 summit of the foreign ministers would be that there's been no joint statement. That only goes on to indicate how sharp the divide is really between the West and Russia over the issue of Ukraine, and also an indication that when the big summit, the G20 summit of leaders, takes place in India in September, there might not be any consensus all over again, which will be highly unfortunate, Becky.